we're starting to realize that we made a pretty big mistake with the pumpkins. Apparently, they expand. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. You might remember earlier this year we built a massive raised vegetable garden for my wife Cambry. And me, of course. And we learned a lot about what we should and shouldn't do and we filmed the whole thing. Let's get started. So it has now been six weeks since we planted the garden. We're going to do a short little update. Um, as you can see, there is a lot of things growing, more than we anticipated, and the pumpkins are insane. But let's start at the other end and talk about what we have. On the left, we have your lettuce. I don't know the variety, but it's tasty in our salads. We still have a lot to harvest. And then we have our cucumbers. We're definitely gonna have to thin these suckers out because look how many we have. Zucchinis and squash. This is a spaghetti squash. We have at least three on this, or four. Wow, this plant's doing well. Then we've got our sugar snap peas. This one, we learned that if we water the leaves in the middle of the day, they get like sunburned. And yep. so we've had to be really careful to just make sure the water goes down there or just water it really early in the morning so they don't get burned. Okay, so we've got on the end there, closest to Zach, our peppers. Those I think are bell peppers. Then we've got this row of artichokes. And then this guy is a jalapeno. So we have that one, and then we have two little guys over here on the other side. Over here is our green beans. That plant's doing well, but they were attacked by birds earlier in the season, so they're still a little small. We got over here our onions. We have two varieties. I forget which ones, but one variety here and one variety there. And then I'm really excited about these carrots. They don't look like much, but I'm really excited to harvest them and give them to my horse. She will love them. Wait a minute, I thought we were going to eat the carrots. You don't eat carrots. <laughs> okay. Vegetables are the worst. And then we've got our potato plants here that I feel like they've been the same size for like the last month. They just grew super rapidly and then have been hanging out this size for about a month. On to row number three. Four rows of our Brussels sprouts. Never seen these guys grow, but I think... The Brussels sprouts grow like near the bottom, so we'll keep our eyes peeled on that. Not entirely sure. These right here are giant sequoias that I got for six dollars a piece on Amazon. They don't, they're not supposed to grow in Utah, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. They're doing all right. And then we've got two different varieties of watermelon. We've got like a smaller mini watermelon on this side and then a larger one that you just get from the store, I think. And then on the end, We've got our baby forest of asparagus. Then we have our corn over there, not doing as well as we'd hope, but it is getting tall. And then finally, we have two varieties of pumpkins. Both of them are massive, and we planted way too many. So we're gonna keep watering, keep feeding the chickens. What'll be a slow time for us will pass really fast for you guys. All right, Cambry, is this our first harvest? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, our beans struggled. They got a lot of sun. We think next year we need to put them in partial shade. But um, we still get a harvest some, so that's kind of fun. So are we just supposed to eat these just like normal? We gotta wash them. It tastes like a vegetable. Not that bad. It tastes fresh. But as you can see, we are missing our barn now. It is completely gone. We are, hopefully by the time we publish this video, we will have a new building in place that actually has a spot for horses inside. Cambry's gonna be excited about that. We also have one tiny jalapeno plant. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm not sure why that one's red. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick these. Cambry said, since I ate a sweet pea, now it's time to- <laughs> Try a jalapeno. Bite a jalapeno. Uh, we were going to save this for some pizza, and we probably should wash them. That's relatively safe. These aren't that hot compared to like, they taste like a regular pepper, not so much a jalapeno. Yeah, I would put these closer to a green pepper instead of a jalapeno. 
Strange. All right, show us your harvest. It's enough for a little snack. Yeah, our little sunburn. So it's been about three months since we planted this thing. <laughs> And we're starting to realize that we made a pretty big mistake with the pumpkins. Apparently, they expand quite a bit. And uh, if you look back here, they're even crawling up our fence through the trees into our neighbor's yard. So I hope our neighbor doesn't mind getting a few pumpkins of his own this year. Now, supposedly, to get the most out of the pumpkins, we're supposed to stop these little nubs from growing so that the plant isn't, like, dedicating its energy to them. That way, it can make these ones grow bigger, like that guy back there. Now it doesn't have to focus on the little guy, and the big guy gets bigger. But once again, we have no idea what we're doing. This is our first time, so uh, <laughs> hopefully we end up with some big pumpkins at the end of the year. All right, so we've been uh, neglecting our garden a little bit, but just because the access was hard to get to because we've been building this barn. So anyway, we're, we gain access, but we've got crazy amount of weeds here that I haven't been able to come and pick. And then we've got our watermelons actually growing. We've got one down here. It was looking good last time I saw it and it shriveled. We still have watered it every day. I just haven't been able to check on all of it. That's a good size watermelon. So yeah, I put Cambry in charge of uh, designing the new barn. <laughs> Bigger means better. <laughs> I think with the potatoes, um, the ground kind of settled a little bit, and so you can see the potatoes poking out above the uh, top of the dirt, and so I really just need to add some more dirt on top of that to keep the potatoes buried. All right, this part of the garden is kind of embarrassing. It is our lettuce. We used it like to its potential. It's only supposed to be good for like a month, I think. We would just come in and like grab a leaf off and then, you Don't know, eat that. put it in a hamburger or something like that. But once they start looking like this, they're bitter and gross. They, it's it's the end of their season. So we really need to rip them all out and plant some more for fall harvest. Yeah. She gone. Ah, there's a spider. <laughs> zucchinis are here, and I like it when we make zucchini bread. But we have this little guy here, and then this oh, guy back yeah. there is just right to pick. So when you pick it, you don't want to pull it straight out. You just want to like rotate it so that the base breaks off. Nice. Are we gonna turn this one into bread? Yeah, I also like making the zucchini boats, but this one will probably be bread. Perfect. Do you have enough zucchinis? Oh, there's, there's one <laughs> <laughs> One interesting thing about this corn plant right here, you can see that it's kind of like bent and growing out of shape. It's because these pumpkins are growing through our corn now and the pumpkin plant literally grabbed the corn stalk and bent it by the weight of the pumpkin plant and its little viney things here. Grabbed it twice and uh, now it's carrying it down. But the corn plant is trying to compensate and then grow back upright again. Pretty interesting. There's a battle in the garden. All right, it's time to harvest the corn. Cambry, how do we know when they're ripe? Wait, do it again, my finger was in the lens. <laughs> Cambry, how do we know when it's time to harvest the corn? Okay, what I read off of the internet, it's gotta be true, it's gotta be true, is once the hair or whatever it is, but whenever you see those like white things that, yep, that stuff, when it comes out, it means 21 days from then the corn should be ready. So when it's brown, it's a pretty good indication that it's ready. So you just open it up a little bit and then you use your fingernail to like try and pop one of the kernels. And if like some of the liquid comes out, then you know it's ready. Cool. It actually looks really good. Check that out. All right. Oh, yeah. Squirt it out. Okay. How many do we need? I don't know. Eight. All right. The harvest is here, and we will cook them. I hope there's no bugs. There's, there's. Buy your hand back. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Edit that out. No. Nope. Oh god. I don't want people knowing I'm a pansy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's beautiful. Look at that. Bug free. I'm eating this one. <laughs> so on this week's episode of Attack of the Pumpkins, we have some pretty big pumpkins in here. I'll show you. We have this guy right here, as well as two more that are back there in this. But what I want to show you 
is these pumpkins here have actually taken this middle pine tree and bent it over as well as this bay the planter box and this bay Cambria can't really <laughs> utilize the space anymore moral of the story is don't plant so many pumpkins we can see that the vines are actually growing up in between all of the corns and there's even a pumpkin growing in midair right there like i don't know seven feet off the ground and then there's another one growing right here in the air and they're in the air they're just using these uh, corn stalks as kind of like their own little climbing fence and we have some going up and into the neighbor's yard but there are still quite a few big ones going on up in there they're also kind of overtaking our watermelons but yeah barn's looking good what do you think cambry i think we learned a lot this year so tonight we're having a little uh tinfoil dinner thing and we thought it would be nice if we got some of our own onions and carrots so we're gonna dig these carrots up for the first time yeah i've been waiting because i wanted them to get really big before we picked any but i think we have some big ones here so there's this big one right here it's one of them that came over by our onions but you can kind of see the top of it like that's pretty big for a carrot i'm excited yeah hello there nice weird growing patterns or something i don't know if a bug got it or something there weird i don't know if it's the top or the bottom but it smells good <laughs> <laughs> yeah it smells like a carrot right <laughs> whoa nice that perfect that's a great carrot yes nice that's a weird one right it's like spirals ready yep shake 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 <laughs> baby carrots oh there's some good sized ones in there yeah yeah all right so the potatoes are not from our garden but the <laughs> the onions and the carrots are from our garden So it is now the middle of September and our garden has kind of run its course. We have still zucchinis coming out. Cambry, how many zucchinis do you think we've gotten over the course of this uh, garden experience? At least 30, maybe 40. Yeah, we definitely have had more success with zucchinis than anything else. Uh, but yeah, our garden is mostly phasing out. I mean, we still have a bunch of carrots and onions we can pick. We have a ton of pumpkins, which you'll see more of in a minute. But today we're picking the peppers because we're going to have fajitas. Speaking of pumpkins, this freaking pumpkin right here has gone all the way through the corn, through the asparagus, and is just making its way all the way to the end of the garden. We are definitely going to plant less pumpkins next year. But it's been beneficial for our peppers because they were like bleaching out with the sun. And since they've had the shade, like this plant had four of them on and only one of them's bleached out. Brussels sprouts are still kind of just doing their own thing. But I think we have one more jalapeno being attacked by this pumpkin. See that grip right there? That's vicious. Jalapeno. This will be a good addition to the fajitas. Wow. You want to take a bite? <laughs> okay. So picking a watermelon is actually really hard to know if it's ripe or not. So if you look on the underside, supposedly it's supposed to be yellow, but this one is still pretty white, or pretty green actually. And then also, if we look right at the place where the watermelon joins with the stem, there's like a little vine thingy as well as one leaf, and both of those have to be dead, supposedly. I'm not an expert, but this one is our closest where it's like still super wide on the bottom. So we're gonna give it a shot and both the little vine thing is dead as well as the leaf is dead. So we are going to just pop this off and give it a shot. And if this one's good, then uh, we'll do the big one later. But yeah, it also sounds kind of hollow inside, which we hope is also an indicator of ripeness. Can't believe this is the smallest. Sometimes the smallest is the best. It's the size of my head. Still not okay. If you avoid the seeds, it's all right. 
It's actually not bad. So the day has finally arrived. This is our final update for the garden. A lot has changed in the last year. How many months have we been doing this, Cambry? I think we started around Mother's Day. And Same things day. look a lot different than they did back then. What's been your favorite part? Wow, there's been so many good parts. But my favorite thing that grew would probably be the carrots. I just love the carrots. <laughs> it's just a small portion, but I'm really excited about that. And my favorite thing to eat from our garden was the corn. I thought that tasted amazing. The corn was really good. My favorite thing was definitely the pumpkins, even though they kind of like took over the entire thing, every single finger. It's the first day of October and it's officially fall now. So we're gonna harvest everything that's left and then we'll tell you what we're gonna do different next year. This guy grew on the edge of the wooden frame. So we are gonna cut through this and see what kind of design is on the underside. Kind of strange. So this is uh, the finger of our pumpkin patch and it has completely just taken over all of these pine trees. Like look at this tree right here. That's crazy. Let's see if we can bring them back up. Next year we are definitely cutting back on the pumpkins. Sorry little buddy. We will uh, straighten this guy up later. So we are about to explore into the neighbor's yard. It looks like this is our garden. Cambry's back there. The pumpkins have gone over the fence, down into the neighbor's yard, and they have a pumpkin. It's all right, all right, all right. So we're just gonna let the neighbors keep that pumpkin. <laughs> I'm not gonna go get it. And we'll just keep the ones on this side of the fence. These are the Brussels sprouts, which we are giving up on because there are no Brussels in the sprouts. I think the Brussels sprouts are supposed to pop up in between these leaves, but plants have had a long time and no Brussels. So oh, we're ripping them out. So if you remember, we built these gardens out of redwood, which means the redwood is supposed to last like 30 years before it, you know, rots away. And everything looks like it's holding up pretty well. Nothing's like bowing out or out of position. All the fingers are still intact. We still need to put pavers down here at the bottom so Camry can wheel around easier. But yeah, even along this back line, everything looks pretty darn good. We also got the new barn in position for Camry's horses when she brings those over. But yeah, we've made some pretty big improvements this year. Plus, my giant sequoia trees are at least double in size now. For me, I think my favorites, the onions for some reason were strangely amazing. And then also the corn, I felt like were really cool. Not to mention, not to mention the pumpkins. I think we got about 30 of them. Pumpkins are freaking awesome. I, they didn't grow as big as I wanted them to, but I think they were just too crowded down there at the end of the finger. Just too many plants, not enough space or nutrients to satisfy all of them. And so when we thin them out next year, we should have bigger pumpkins and it should be a little better. This one's definitely the weirdest looking pumpkin of the bunch. We're gonna leave the zucchini plants because they are still producing. It's rather amazing. It really is pretty amazing that we can get all of this food and all of this greenery and all of this shrubbery from just tiny seeds and a lot of water. And a lot of horse manure. <laughs> and good soil. <laughs> so Cambry, now that we've finished harvesting, what are we gonna do different for next year? Oh, I've got a list of things, but the first thing being that the pumpkins get their own row. Like I'm not sharing it with anything else, just they have their own row. And then the watermelon have their own row. We planted so many pumpkins, they just took over everything. And so less pumpkin plants. For sure, less pumpkin plants, more space for them. And thinking... we can like delegate where they grow. Like we can make sure the vines only go off of the one side instead of this year we just let the them rows. go rogue. Yeah, and then Cambry couldn't even get down two of the fingers because they were just full of vines. Mm -hmm. And next year we're talking about maybe putting in like a little bit of a fence or like trellis or something for them to grow up a little bit more rather than sprawling out. Yeah, and trying to keep them out of our neighbor's yard. Because we know they like climbing. Yeah. Yeah, I think our peas, like our sugar snap peas, and our um, sweet peppers and our jalapenos, I think we'll put near yeah. the shade a little bit more. They just got too much sun. Yeah. Cucumbers were a total flop. They tasted terrible. There were too many of them, just terrible. So I'm gonna try a different variety and less plants next year, as an, and the lettuce as well. We just like, we're overgrown with lettuce, so I'm gonna narrow it down to one row of lettuce. We just don't eat that much for the two of us. Yeah. 
Next year, I'm gonna be way more aggressive with the bugs. I'm gonna put diatomaceous earth down because that supposedly keeps a lot of them away from your plants. And then I'm also gonna spray with neem oil because it's safe for bumblebees. And I was really happy with how many bumblebees we got this year. So yeah. I wanna keep those guys safe by just spraying neem oil on the plants. So overall, I would say that this year's garden was a major success, but with what we know now, next year's garden will be even more successful, as well as the major improvements we're gonna make with the pavers, as well as the watering system, which I can't tell you about yet. I'm gonna save that for another video. Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions as to what we should grow next year, I'd love to hear it. And if you have any gardening tips, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.